Hello and welcome to Money Roundup, our new weekly series which keeps you informed with the global economy stories that can make a difference to your investment. Every Monday you'll find us right here on the True Potential Investor YouTube channel and this week we are starting with some very good news. The UK has achieved a long-awaited milestone with the current budget for the latest full fiscal year based on so-called day-to-day spending being fully covered by tax revenues. The surplus stands at 112 million and this is the first time it's been recorded in 16 years. Add to the good news is the fact that there are now record low levels of unemployment, meaning more people can make tax contributions. The government will be very happy with this achievement, particularly as the elimination of the deficit in the prior fiscal year has been achieved one year sooner than the Office for Budget Responsibility predicted last month. What they'll be going for now is to eliminate the overall deficit, which has fallen by 3.5 billion to 42.6 billion. That's great news, a level we've not seen since March 2007. What we've got to keep in mind is that the Chancellor is under increasing pressure to loosen the purse strings. The calls for an end to austerity mean that the target for eliminating the overall deficit has been pushed back. We'll keep you updated on this over the coming months as the government looks to get the right balance here. It's great to hear the positive story and good luck to the Chancellor as further progress is made. Across the Atlantic, the US 10-year government bond yield crossed a 3% level this week, reaching a four-year high. The yield on the 10-year acts as a reference point and an anchor for debt prices globally. In general terms, bond yields give an insight into investors' expectations for interest rates and inflation. In the US debt markets, two-year and 10-year benchmark bond yields are both rising. What we could be seeing here is that investors are signalling that higher interest rates lie ahead in the short term and inflation may tick higher in the long term. However, there are many other factors influencing yield levels such as unconventional monetary policy, asset purchasing, interest rates, the business cycle and commodity prices. Taking all factors together, the 10-year bond hitting 3% is not that significant because it hasn't even representative of the long-run post-war average for bond yields which exceeds 5%. In Europe, the briefing from the European Central Bank on Thursday produced a clear indication that policymakers will continue to move cautiously in terms of reducing support of monetary stimulus. We expected them to hold the main interest rate steady, and that's exactly what they did. They've kept the bond purchasing pace of €30 billion Euros a month, at least until the end of September 2018. Quantitative easing is set to remain in place. There are still fragile parts in the European banking system. However, it is expected that growth will continue but at a slower pace. European Central Bank President Mario Draghi said that notwithstanding the latest economic indicators which suggest that the growth cycle may have peaked, the growth momentum is expected to continue. The central bank's target for inflation is 2%, but Eurozone inflation is currently at 1.3%. This failure to achieve a target is another clue that the European economy will continue to require monetary policy designed to stimulate growth. Very interesting. Remember, you can see how these stories affect your investment by logging in on the True Potential Investor app or tpinvestor.com and tracking your investment anytime, anywhere, 24-7. Whatever is going on in our world, our investment team are actively managing your portfolio to help you do more with your money. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of our videos. We'll be here every Monday at 12pm letting you know what is going on around the world and helping you to do more with your money.